Hi everyone, this is Daryl and welcome back to Book Odyssey. Now that we've seen the season 1 finale of Apple TV's Foundation series, I wanted to discuss some of my final thoughts now that we can look back at the season as a whole. This video follows on from my first thoughts video and my mid-season breakdown, which I'll link to here, and I'll be using these as the jumping off points for this video. So now that we've seen season one in its entirety, what do we think? Personally, I've thoroughly enjoyed each episode immensely, and overall, I think they've really got it cracked. But looking back, I have a couple of things on my wish list for season two that would increase my enjoyment of the show even more. I'll get to this in a bit, but for now I want to touch on some of the potential issues I outlined back in a video about whether Foundation would work for TV audiences, to see if these have been fully resolved. As I've already spoken about previously, the Foundation books aren't very action-y. I know there's a better word for that. But what I mean to say is that they are driven by concept and plot over action and characters. TV audiences today, however, want and expect the whole package. On action, there was an issue here, because to simply say, right, let's just add some action, would go against one of the major themes in the original trilogy, that being violence is the last refuge of the incompetent. The seldom crises that arise are solved not through violence or action, but through calm, rational logic. But to give TV audiences those adrenaline-thumping action scenes, they had to get around this. This would have been made even more difficult by the fact that Salvor Hardin in the books had this theme ingrained into his very character. So it appeared throughout the season that TV Salvor was going to be vastly different from the book Salvor, because she was in fact the warden in charge of protecting Terminus and was happy to do so using force when needed. While TV Salvor might be ready to use her gun, Perhaps she will ultimately come to think like her father, and learn this lesson in a really good character arc. This seems more likely now when we discover at the end of the final episode that Salvor is on track to become the mayor of Terminus, which is the position book Salvor held in the story. We discover other stuff too, which I'll get to. It's in the final two episodes that we can really see how well the writers managed to successfully embed a good level of action throughout the story while maintaining this key theme. In the final episode, after all the action, was it violence that ultimately resolved the issue between Terminus, the Anacreans and the Thespins? No, it wasn't. They came to a rational resolution that is mostly in line with the book, and for me this did not feel like an anticlimax, which I guess could have been a risk. The other potential issue I thought the show might face was in the characters, because, like I said, the original Foundation trilogy was driven by concepts and plot over action and characters, something that was common during the golden age of sci-fi. Any concerns over the characters being paper thin were quickly put to rest when it was clear the writers had spent a substantial amount of time carving out backstories and rational motivations, which is great. However, looking back at the season as a whole, I think I need more character development in season 2 to keep me involved and up my emotional investment in the characters. Throughout the whole season, we didn't even know if we'd see any of these characters in season 2, but now we know at least Gale and Salvor will be hanging around, I think the writers need to pay a little more attention to these to really make the two characters come to life. The problem with a lot of TV shows having only 10 episodes per season these days... These days? Yeah, I just heard myself. The problem is that writers have to get all of that story and plot in there which leaves little time to breathe and explore the characters in more depth. I think back to TV shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Star Trek, DS9 specifically, which had roughly 22 episodes per season, and they often devoted entire episodes or more to stories that solely focused on character development and sub-stories away from the main plot. This gave us, as viewers, the opportunity to experience the calm before the storm, so to speak, in order to really feel the punch of action when it comes, and also to get to know the characters, to feel like we know them personally. I can imagine this is hard to do with just 10 episodes. But then again, Game of Thrones managed to largely put it off. But also, they had great character stuff ready in the source material. So that's what I want from Season 2. 
As I'm talking about characters, I also want to address the issues that many have with Gail Dornick. I know that many consider this character to be a bit of a Mary Sue, which is basically a character who is portrayed as being too perfect, with no flaws, making them come off as unrealistic and flat. I had a long think about this one because I hadn't really considered it until I read some of your comments in my earlier videos, and I think I might agree. Gail doesn't appear to have many, if any, flaws, at least none that have been revealed. They've given her a really great backstory, which I love, but I get it. She's amazing at mathematics, she wins Harry Seldon's prize, Seldon wants to teach her, Raish falls in love with her, then we learn she has precog side powers. I mean, they needed to make her addicted to crack or something, you know, grit her up a bit. But then, now I think about it, they could probably stand to do the same with Salvor, who's starting to look a little Mary Sue-ish at this point too. So there's another for my season 2 wishlist. Where the TV show went beyond my expectations in terms of character was in the Cleons, which as a concept is fantastic. I also loved that we got a Cleon that was different from the others, even if it was all part of a trap set by the rebels on Trantor. It was great to see a multifaceted approach to the personalities of the Cleons, because in the beginning, with the original Brother Day blasting people to blood vapour for simply reading a banned book, I feared we would be getting a paper thin 2D villain. But I don't think that's what we have, and I really hope this is explored more in Season 2. Another on the wish list for season two is that I want to see more of Demazel, who is a captivating part of the show. In the second half of the season, we really get a true sense of Demazel's age, the mystery around her, and how far she is willing to go, or programmed to, in order to help maintain the dominance of the Empire. We also see fantastic internal conflict in her. Ironically, Demazel the AI appears to be more fully developed than some of the human characters. I also want to take a moment to appreciate some of the fantastic additions to the story that had little to do with the Foundation source material. Some of the societal, cultural and religion aspects to the show only elevated the world building and were so entertaining to watch. But they were also used as tools to further develop some of the themes of the books, which I really appreciated seeing. We can see this mostly in the theme of change versus stagnation, where the show uses Luminism, the galaxy's seminal religion, as a great vehicle for this. Luminists worship three goddesses who used to be one entity, the Maid, the Mother and the Crone. Millennia ago, the Mother gave the faithful the gift of reincarnation, a constant process of death and rebirth with no end point, since they teach the potential growth of a soul's knowledge is infinite. This concept contrasts greatly with the very existence of the Cleons, which have become the personification of the stagnant empire. This entire story arc was fantastic and felt very authentic to the original ideas in the Foundation books, despite being a TV show edition. Also, I know this will be divisive, but I also really liked that they brought in the concept of Psy powers at this stage, with both Gale and Salvor exhibiting some kind of precog telepathic ability. It feels like this could be the beginning of a story featuring the mule, which if you've read the trilogy, you'll know features heavily, which I liked. And we know the mule is going to feature at some point because Gale's narrative in the very first episode mentions him. Or her, who knows. With these psi powers, at first I was a little bit, hmm, does everyone have psi powers now? But then, the big reveal. Salvo Hardin turns out to be the biological daughter of Gale and Raish. After my, oh my god that makes sense now moment, I let this idea settle in, and I'm okay with it. They wanted Salvo and Gale in season 2, which we know is set 140 years in the future, so this was how they went about pulling the characters together, allowing them to skip forward in time. Makes sense. What it might mean for the characters? Who knows. Clearly the writers have gone total rogue with this one, but I'm looking forward to finding out. My non psi power predictions for season 2 is that we'll see Demazel featured more, as will the Cleons, but the Empire will be on the brink of ruin, and Gale and Salvor will head back to Terminus just in time for the next Selden Crisis. And also maybe we'll see our first glimpse of the Mule. What I'd like to see is more character development and a little more breathing space between plot points. No more Mary Sues, and even more crazy intensity from the Cleons. I like my coffee black and my villains complicated. So that's it for my foundation final thoughts. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you've been enjoying the show in the comments 
or if you haven't. Please hit the like button to support the video and also subscribe if you haven't already for more videos from me. Until next time guys, happy reading.